With the beginning of each academic year, convocation is a time to consider why we are here and to frame our expectations of ourselves and of Yale. Why Yale? What drew you to this place? What keeps you at this place? You are here to continue your musical journey, one that all of you began when you realized that music chose you. When its beauty and wonder captured your mind and heart, your admission, matriculation, and this evening's installation of the entering class recognize your commitment to your talent at this juncture in your journey. To have this distinguished faculty assess your talent, the maturity of your musical voice, your pristine techniques, and your basic knowledge of music theory and history, and then invite you to come and study with them is a stellar accomplishment but it is one that each of you likely replicated in several other places. Clearly, your musical gifts are, as Horatio Parker, the first dean of this school said, lofty. And these gifts are actually skills, tools of your trade. Here at Yale, your skills are thoughtfully honed, tuned, and refined. Some of these skills reflect your sensitivity as a musician, the way you might interpret a piece. They collaborate with your chamber music partners, or these skills help absorb musical qualities of your teacher that you wish to reflect. But what about your goals, your expectations, your aspirations? Are they lofty? Why Yale? Yale is a university whose resources you, and indeed all of us, can use to become independent, nimble, and creative thinkers. Yale, the college, the constellation of professional graduate schools, world-class libraries, the galleries and museums, the architecture, the diversity of people, and much, much more. This remarkable place offers us all an intellectual buffet to stimulate good questions, and to celebrate visionary ideas. This School of Music and the university provide an environment where you have ample opportunities to make sense of things, like who you are as an artist, why you do what you do, and why what you do has value for society and for the world where you live. But here, you must choose the path to take, one that is rather expedient and will sustain and slightly improve your skills, or one that will lead you to an artistic life marked by thinking that has depth and breadth, true substance rather than image. The latter path requires courage that is all too rare, for you must decide that your experiences on the journey are far, far more important to your personal and artistic integrity than winning a competition or an audition, getting yet another gig this week, or settling for the easy A. What I am referring to is a journey that transforms, that changes forever, your highly developed skills into musical virtues. Barry Schwartz's article on intellectual virtues ignited my imagination about musical virtues, which are, in essence, reflections of our behavior, mirrors of our integrity. Musical virtues, then, illumine our approach to and our beliefs about all of our musical tasks. Let me give you a couple of illustrations. A performer may interpret the Pathetique Sonata of Beethoven, every mark on the manuscript and note of the teacher faithfully executed. The artist, however, will lift the notes off the paper and reveal intent and meaning to the listener. The difference comes from studying, reading, playing, and finding historical and musical contexts from your analysis, and most importantly, 
from thinking about how you will actually assimilate this information into your expression of the score. In this instance, the score becomes a sacred trust. The performer gets out of the way of the music, and the listener is transported to a higher realm of hearing and communicating with Beethoven. If you had the privilege of being at Norfolk and hearing Manny Axe play this piece, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. It may take courage and perseverance to sustain and possibly improve your musical skills, but they are essential virtues when new ideas are tested, especially with those of us who might disagree, when risk can easily result in failure and when easy answers are preferable to asking why incessantly. Who hasn't missed the proverbial high note? Those who never tried to reach it. Another example. A singer's command of phonetic diction in several languages is laudable, commendable, nonetheless, a deeper understanding of a native vocabulary, grammar, syntax, literature, would quite possibly enliven the text. Musical skills, when assessed fairly and honestly, provide a barometer of our abilities in relation to our peers. Sometimes, when we're assessing ourselves in that context, it's very difficult to see reality. But the growth of that into a virtue is one's recognition that each individual's strength and understanding is teaching all of us something very important. And indeed, all of us contribute to the well-being of our art. Why Yale? Because each step of your journey here can be transformative to think and to make sense of things. You will need solitude for introspection. You will need a slower pace that assures some degree of mindfulness. And though I know many of you might disagree with what I'm about to say, you will achieve some of this by unplugging your devices. Even for a short time each day, you will rediscover and reconnect with the world that surrounds you. Yale's offerings beckon. To you who are studying Debussy and Ravel, a visit to the impressionistic exhibition in the Yale Art Gallery seems mandatory to sense color, light, sensuality. In the thousands of volumes in our libraries, the adventures of research will unlock your mind and convince you never to trust Wikipedia. <laughs> your favorite role in opera is Verdi's Violetta? Why would you not spend a day with Verdi's handwritten diaries in the Beinecke? What can the grand strategies classes in Yale College and entrepreneurial courses in the management school teach you about launching a career? It is also important to mention the collaborative ventures with the schools of medicine, nursing, and public health. To name a few, music cognition, emotional wellness, and performance injury. To be a student in the School of Music, a graduate professional school that is truly an integral component of this internationally renowned research institution, is to have the freedom to choose a remarkable path for your life and your career. You come here as excellent performers, conductors, and composers, you will leave being even better. We expect and we know this. But what is the duty of an artist, of one whose talent has brought them innumerable opportunities and considerable notoriety? What is your responsibility to your talent, to yourself? You are, and we are, the caregivers for humanity's soul. I believe that music is the currency of hope and that Yale is a repository for transformative experiences 
that will enable you to repair our troubled world. The journey to musical virtues and self-enlightenment is before you, and it will, it most surely will forever alter your perspective. Why Yale? Because here music has always been valued and seen as essential for humanity. These virtues become moral in context, and I want to share two poignant examples. On this stage, perhaps a decade ago, and then this summer at the Norfolk Festival, were splendid performances of the Messian Quartet for the end of time. If nothing else ever existed to prove that art is essential, all you have to do is consider a 31-year-old composer who was taken prisoner when France fell to Germany and knew that he had several people on the train to the camp that could play a piece that had been germinating in his head. And he had a guard who provided the paper and a pencil and a pen. And before 4,000 people on a cold, brutal night, they performed this piece. And later Messiaen says, never have I had such a rapt and attentive audience? Why is art essential? This summer, where are you sitting in this hall? This remarkable program that we have here called the Music in Schools Initiative was presenting the final concert of the Morse Academy And these children came and performed, and their families were here. These were families who, years earlier, before our leadership team uh, with uh, Michael and his staff made them feel safe about coming in this hall, filled this hall. The students who teach in this program are especially trained. This is not a skill. This is something that has become a musical and moral virtue. They know how to teach and how to talk to these students. But what I learn every time I'm with them is that the whole family has changed. So when this program occurs and four students who never dreamed they would be given an instrument to go on and pursue their musical careers in a college receive that Every eye in the house is wet, and the place erupts. Who dares say that art is not essential? What you do is important to humanity's soul. Here, you can choose a path that will deepen your experience. It will deepen the way you express your art. It will transform your artistry and it will change you as a person. My wish for every student that comes to our school is that your journey is successful and that you embrace your time here with courage and with a sure sense of direction. Alice in Wonderland, lost, approached the Cheshire Cat and asked, which way ought I to go? The Cheshire Cat replied, first, I must know which way you want to go. Alice said, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. The cat wisely answered, then it doesn't really matter which way you go. Thank you, and welcome to Yale.